What up, Adam Smashers? G'day. And welcome to, you could say part three and a half. Well, yeah, you could say three and a half. Really, it's the third instalment of our voyage through the classic Maltz series. Indeed. Another wee dram. Another wee dram. You've got to stop. As soon as you hear the wee dram, you just want to say it in your shittest Scottish accent. And I don't have a good Scottish accent. <laughs> I only have shit Scottish accents. Shit and shitter. Yeah, exactly. So where are we, um, where are we headed today, Rickus? Uh, the Garden of Scotland, as it's colloquially known. Uh, Speyside. Speyside. The one and only Craig and Moore, the Speyside representative in the classic Maltz series. I don't think I've ever said it in any other way other than Craig and Moore with my shit Scottish accent. <laughs> okay, it's, no, yeah, it's not a word that sort of, uh, would you say, like compels me to, to bung on a Scottish accent for some reason. Oh, fair enough. I just, yeah. I, I don't say it not often. Like, not like Cory Vrakin. <laughs> Uh, old hobbit speak. <laughs> We're jumping straight in. Cragamore. Derived from Great Rock in Gaelic. Mm, Scott Gaelic. Yeah, see, so the home of Van Halen. Comes in roses. Well. Another Great Rock. That is Great Rock, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Founded in 1869 by Big John Smith. On land leased from Sir George McPherson Grant. Cragamore, situated in the village of Belindalock in Banffshire, Scotland, about 6Ks down the road from Glen Farkless. And the distillery lies at the gateway to Speyside, near to where the River Avon flows into the Spey. And Johnny Smith was uh, related to uh, George Smith, I believe, who was the founder of the Glenlivet distillery. Yeah. There you go. Hmm. I didn't. I did not know that. Yeah, and, uh, and Johnny would, had been previously involved with Glen Farkless, McAllen, and Glen Libet Distilleries. So right. he uh, a, he had a bit of bit of trade experience before a, launching out on his own. He's got a pedigree. Hmm. So are you saying, um, Big John? Yeah, Big he, John yeah, was already the manager of McAllen, Glen Libet, F- Glen Farkless. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Wishaw. I've never heard of their probably been and gone i would imagine so yeah. i mean not that we've heard of every distillery but uh yeah. that's not one that i've come across ever not until not until this time mm. researching it was a bit of a uh, entrepreneur big john a visionary a visionary sorts. yeah you could you could easily describe him as a visionary uh great business now he chose a site because of its proximity to both uh, the waters of the Crag and Burn and uh, because it was close to the Strathspey Railway. It was the first distillery, Cragamore. Cragamore was the first distillery to take advantage of the railway system for transportation. Um, they, uh, Big John even lobbied for their own railway siding. Yeah, I, I had a, I got a note here that says he, uh, he ordered the construction of a railway Rail road track to mm-hmm. the Ballindalock railway station when he yeah. built the distillery. He must have had a fair bit of influence. He had him. a bit of whack. Yeah, must have. I mean, it, you well, know, I mean, I know. Last time I went and said, "Hey, I want a fucking <laughs> railway track <laughs> built from my joint to fucking central metro stop." <laughs> they went, "Fuck off, idiot! Who are you? Yeah, who are you?" So yeah, he had the, some clout. The stones on that guy. <laughs> Well, Big John himself was a massive railway enthusiast. Oh, yeah, inverted commas on the word massive. So was he one of those dudes that sat around in his basement with a little model, <laughs> you know, set? Choo, and choo. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think so. Yeah. I reckon a model railway set would have cost a fucking pretty penny back then too. Oh, fuck it, I thought it would have. Back in the 1800s. He was the Reverend Lovejoy of his time. <laughs> Just buffing out. <laughs> no, nah, he was. Um, I put massive in inverted commas because he was, he was so big he was unable to sit down in a normal carriage. He had to travel in the guards' van. Sick. 
Uh, he's estimated to have weighed somewhere around 165 kilos or Fuck. a few empirical cretins. That's 360-odd pounds. Dear God. Which, side note, that got me thinking. Like, why is pounds abbreviated to LB? Oh, that's a good note. That's, I don't, it's probably something to do with... Uh, no, I was going to say it's maybe something to do with Latin because please note... You're on... Dude, you're on the... Yeah, right. You're on the right path. Oh, okay, right. Cause Continue. Yeah, yeah, well, because please note is a fucking... A fuck. I forgot what the... NB. NB is please note. Right? So, so when you're... When okay. you're writing something down, yeah, right? it's okay. NB, and yeah. that's please note, but it's Latin. Those words but you are can't Latin. you can't remember what the oh, N fuck and B no, are. I'm not that smart. Oh. Yeah, no, my memory's fucked. Dude. Okay. It might be. Um, I would say it's an abbreviation for something. Uh, the origin of the LB abbreviation for pounds, anyway, comes from the word libra, which is Latin for scales or balance, and. It, it's an ancient Roman unit of mass that was equivalent to approximately 328.9 grams. Um, it was divided into 12 uncie, or a singular as an uncia, which is where we get the word ounce from. Yeah, right. So you cast a wide net, and every now and then a shrimp crawls into it. <laughs> <laughs> and back onto the railway. The Stress Bay Railway is now disused and it forms the Speyside Way Long Distance Walking Route. That'd be a nice walk, I reckon. Yeah, it would be. I mean, I'm through just the, purely guessing. I, I, yeah, no, I just reckon the, it would be nice. In the spring or the summer, mm. through the Garden of Scotland, also inverted commas. But poor old Johnny, he passed away in 1886. And... Owing to the man's stature, I really feel for those poor bearers. Oh, fuck, yeah. Imagine carrying a fucking, what did you say, 160 kilo corpse? About that, yeah. Fuck. No, thanks. <laughs> you'd want to have, uh, you'd have half a dozen at least. You're, you'd probably go, oh, he's a big fella, lots of clout. You know what? Let's get a horse-drawn carriage. Oh, no, fuck. You'd stick him on a railroad you car would, for sure. Actually, yeah. You'd stick there him you on go. a railroad proper, car for proper sure. Proper tribute. Because the, the development of the railway network in that area was not to be sneezed at because when you're in the highlands, the raw materials that you need to fucking, I mean, A, build a distillery and then produce commercial quantities of, you know, whiskey, that's not to be sneezed at. Like, that's fucking, in the days before the railroad, it was hard work getting everything you needed together yeah I mean, fuck, imagine sure. carrying a fucking still on horse-drawn <laughs> cart or fucking all the materials you need to build it all together so it's fucking and then on the other side of the coin getting your whiskey out is going to be a commercial quantities i mean if you want to get to europe and and the u.s when when all that stuff when yeah. those markets became available i mean a fucking train is by far the best way of doing it right mm -hmm. so fucking genius well there was Keep in mind there was no um, channel tunnel, but still the railway. But you're getting railway, railway to, to port. A, to a port, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is well, that's the foundation of most cities. Fuck yeah. are being harbour cities. Yep. Or the ones that thrive anyway, the ones that flourish. Actually, did you know that Sydney, one of the sites they picked was Eden? For Sydney, have you ever been down to Eden? I have not been down to Eden. And it's kind of like a double bay. I'm fucking glad Sydney is not in Eden, because Eden is fucking beautiful. We just would have trashed that, sh that yeah. place. Well, we, we trashed Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, Sydney would have been, a couple of hundred years ago, it would have been quite quite a nice place, I mm. reckon. Especially down the Parramatta River. Mm. Well, we trashed that. Yeah. <laughs> so we just hell. started pumping fucking <laughs> heavy metal straight uh, yeah. into it. Well, 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 fucking affluent waste. Let's just fucking pump that into mm. this pretty river here. The oh. solution is dilution. <laughs> well, the river ain't pretty anymore. <laughs> tasty fish, tasty fish, poison fish. <laughs> yeah, so when Smith died in 1886, and unfortunately he didn't leave to see the first whiskey special leave Belinda Lock. Station for Aberdeen, which happened a year later in 1887. No. 25 wagons carrying 300 casks of sweet, sweet Cragamore nectar. Oh, nice. 
1901, I'll go through some historical points of note. Excellent. In 1901, the family enlisted the help of renowned architect Charles Doig to modernise the distillery. Thus, Craigamore was rebuilt. You've heard us harp on about Charles Doig. Just look him up. He's responsible for fucking heaps. Uh, they even call those pagodas the sort of Asian style looking pagodas or ventilators, Doig ventilators because of that particular gentleman. Uh, the distillery was electrified in 1919 with lighting powered by a cola petrol-driven Jenny, or generator, if you're not from Australia. The coal-fired stills were converted to a mechanical stoking system in 1961. In 64, they doubled the number of stills from two to four. And all four stills were converted to steam heating from an oil-fired boiler in 72, which brought Cragamore to the forefront of distillery innovation, so to speak. And something you'll love, Mick. In 2002, they opened a visitor center to the public. Yes. You know I love a visitor center. There's no point going to Scotland otherwise. Well, that's it. I mean... If, what, do you want to be cold and miserable? If, at least you can be cold and drunk and miserable. Exactly. Inside a fucking visitor centre. Mm-hmm. What's the point of visiting if there's not a central place for you to visit? <laughs> and on that note, I'm pretty keen to uh, to sample this fucker. Why not? This is the first for both of us, I believe. It is. I haven't tried the Kraken Ball before. I didn't get all the way through my six classic malts. I fucking stopped at my favourite one. <laughs> and that was fucking So you were it. telling me earlier, what actually happened to your original set? Well, so it was such a lovely gift that I never opened it. I just fucking looked at it and then went, oh, hang on, I've got to try the whiskey. So I went and bought a second set so that I got to keep the gift unopened. And I still have the bottles from the original gift. Mm-hmm. This is fucking, yeah. You know, I'm 40 this year. So this is fucking 22 year ago. And those bottles, the miniature 50 mil glass bottles with the old fucking school tin fucking yeah, screw top just lids. metal screw tops, aren't they? Like they're still like little feature pieces on my whiskey shelf. I reckon they're only about between 40 and 60% full because of the <laughs> evaporation over 22 years. But they, yeah, they would taste fucking horrendous. Oh, they, 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 I have no doubt, and I have not stored them well. Yeah, I mean they've have they've travelled left- they've travelled most places with me because I loved them so much. They're the reason I started drinking whiskey. Not those particular bottles, but I went and bought a second set of those yeah. bottles so that I could drink them. Fucking look where we are now. And did you did you sample the Cragamore? Never got to the Cragamore. Okay. Never got to the Cragamore, and I don't think I ever got to the. Um, the, I don't think I got to the Glen Kinchy. I think they were the two that I didn't get to. Okay. I started with the ones to come, yeah. basically. But yeah, so from as far as I'm aware, I think this is ex bourbon cast, the Craig Yeah. Ball. Yep. And, and the 12 year old is their core expression. It is. Before the classic malts, as with a lot of the classic malts, it all went into blended whiskey, the, mm. the Craig and Moore. Now, so the the first blend that depended on it was the James Watson number 10 blend. And these days, most of it is used in Old Par and White Horse blends. Mm. My nan used to drink White Horse and my mm. uncle used to make um, Irish Bailey or Bailey's style Irish cream yeah. out of it yep. as well. That and teachers, I think. It must be a... Um... This must be a redesigned label. Apparently, the uh, the steam engine. Oh, there used to be a steam engine on the label. I'll take a which wee... is just a testament to Big John's affinity. I'll take a photo of the label on the wee bottle I've got. That's twenty two year old. Yeah, and see see if that's got a. Oh, I can. Sure, I can find an old label online. Put it in the show notes. Yeah, fair enough. Hmm. She's pretty typical spay on the Very. nose, isn't she? It's um got a lot of body though on the nose. I think mm. it's got almost like a meatiness. I was about to say meaty, 
And I, I discovered something uh, because Craig and Moore and most of the, Craig, the, most of the classic malts, Craig and Moore uh, in particular, still use worm tubs to mm. cool uh, the, the freshly made spirit. And there has been some correlation between uh, a meaty type of aroma on them and and sulfuric or sulfurous kind of uh, taste okay. as well. So, but on the nose, it is meaty. Meaty is a word that I would have used as well. Mm. Fucking worm tubs. I like the concept. You know, trying to fucking just. I, I, I actually, I'm keen to look at a picture and see what they look like. It's, I've, I've only read about them, but. But yeah, meaty is a word that I would describe. Kind of floral, kind yeah. of. It's just very thick. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a really um, a bottom, bottom to mid. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of high notes at all. So obviously, I mean, we associate that floral style with Highlands. This doesn't have a lot of that to it at all. Yeah. But there's no peat. You know, there's no smoke. It's it, but it's it's real bottom heavy. Yeah. Well, apparently, yeah, they do use a lightly peated malt, but it's very light. Usually selected from a range of lowland and speyside farms. Now, I know I say this a lot and you disagree with me often, but is there tea on the nose here? In this one, I'll say yes. That's what the high end is. Yeah, right. A little bit of that citrus flower, but not, not Eves. There's a, a kind of. Oh, I wish I was better with words. Like descriptive <laughs> words, adjectives even. <laughs> I'm good with verbs. I'm a verb man. I'm a verber. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a doing words. -er. I'm not good at doing stuff, but I'm good at doing You're words. Good at doing words. Yeah. I do words well. Let my words do the doing. Yeah. I like my words to find their own adjectives. <laughs> I like to be self-empowered. To be to be completely honest, I, I'm not. There's not a. Is there? I'm expecting a complexity on the nose to this that just doesn't seem to be there. Might leave a little time to air. Mm. First it went down a treat though. Yeah, it's very smooth. Very spay. Just like thicker, just way more substance than most other spays. Oh, yeah, it's a nice robe on it. Yeah, very nice. There's a little pepper on that first sip, but nowhere near as much as often with those first sips. Mm -hmm. No, it's really smooth. That's a fucking nice. real nice robe on it. Sort of mildly fruity, but they're all deep fruits. Yeah, and she's... The spice is the spice of the wood, mm -hmm. I reckon. Good bit of oak to it as well. Mm. Not as complex as all the literature sort of claims, I don't think. No, I read a bit that uh, said that the distillery claims that it's the use of the word tums, worm tubs that gives it the complexity. But this is, this is a... I wouldn't use the word complex. I wouldn't say it was overly simple, but... It's not a particularly complex dram. It's a, a, a an unpretentious dram. Mm. It's it's warming. The wood is the hero here. I think mm -hmm. um, that is the main thing that I'm left with. Mm, the, it's wood on the finish. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wood on the finish. The spirit itself is unassuming. It's uh, it takes a back seat to the wood. It's, I would say this is inoffensive. Mm -hmm. Like it could call me a cunt and I'd go, 
Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Do you have any other constructive criticism to give me? <laughs> Well, would they also allow the wash to ferment for a very long time, apparently, in its traditional wooden washbacks, which are made of European larch or lark, I'm not sure, which is said to be a vital contributor to the spirit's taste. You know, nosing after a couple of sips, I think, is there a touch of, like, apricot? In there, maybe. Like, there's there's some kind of. Yeah, that's. It's pretty good. Pretty good description. If it would be, it'd be dried apricot. I think, like, it's a. There's some sort of stone fruits here. Mm. I, I always sort of default to plums, but it's not quite plummy. No, I, I, I think it's just it a is. little. It's a little... Either dried or stewed apricots. Yeah, maybe of. stewed. It's some sort of stone fruit. It's not as light as peach or not as sort of tart as nectarine. No. And it's... Like there is... It's malty. Like mm -hmm. it smells... Yeah, malty. Yeah. Yeah, malty apricot. With a nice oaky finish. It smells balanced. Yeah, you know, there's there's nothing that really screams at you, but it doesn't feel hidden or. Um, so it's like balanced with a yeah good bit of weight. Yeah, it's I not, like that the the bottom mid range. It's not underwhelming, but nor is it no. overwhelming. This is a classic whelming malt. <laughs> it, it it whelms me. I'm whelmed. No, I am whelmed. I'm I'm absolutely whelmed. Well, no. I can't be absolutely well. Well, I could be absolutely <laughs> whelmed. But I'm quite whelmed. Yeah, I dig. Can I be honest with you, Rick? Mm -hmm. Speyside is not my favourite protected region in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. It is... I, th I think it's the whelmiest of, <laughs> of the whelming. <laughs> like, it's it's the go-to, right? It, it's There's just so many space sides. I think it's uh, the... It's the crowd... The most crowd-pleasing. It's the Bondi of beaches, right? <laughs> Everyone goes there, but you go there and you're kind of like, oh, this is a pretty shit beach. Well, no, no that's not true. No. It's not a shit beach, but no. you're just like, dude, there are so many better beaches, yeah. right? Like, I was gonna say it's more like it's more like the Coogee. Like this is this is all right, or it's like the Evoker of the Central Coast. This is all right, but there's better places. There's there. Heaps better beaches, right? Yeah, I, that's Speyside for me. Mm -hmm. Like you know, everyone goes to Bondi. Everyone drinks Speyside. Speyside is brilliantly marketed and produces by far the most whiskies. Mm -hmm. out of anywhere else in the world, right? There is more space-eyed whiskies than there is anything else. I think they're, they're just the most easiest to drink, you know. They are. They're sort of, without sounding too derogatory, they are the most middle of the road. Yeah, like they're the whelmingest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's hard to impress me as a space. There have been space yeah, that have yeah. impressed me. But the most impressive space for me have been peated space. <laughs> but that's just personal taste, right? But this is this is a really Are you surprised that they've used this as their choice for the space side region? Or do you think that this is just like how many distilleries do you think Diageo have or had at the time when they brought, you know, the classic malt range out? I'm, I'm surprised not, that I'm this is the space sure. side what do you have? Examples of other space side distilleries that they own? No, I don't. I only uh, just thought of that then. That would have been yeah. an interesting road of research to That's go down. If you did, you find that out for me. Uh. Yeah, I I have very little knowledge of any other Diageo owned and operated space side distilleries. I think this is a great choice, 
regardless. I am, I'm quite enjoying this, even though it's not, you know, it doesn't tick all my boxes. It's still a very nice whiskey. Like I think you hit the nail on the head. This is very middle of the road. Like this is the this is this is double lines in the center of the road. <laughs> there is don't get me wrong. Like I'm not trying to be derogatory. There's nothing bad about this whiskey. I just don't think there's anything exceptional about this whiskey. Mm. It's just a nice whiskey. As an example of a space side, I think it's um, I think it's one of the better ones there for sure. Now, like for its for its age. Definitely for its price range. Well, I don't know. I reckon I'd rate Glenfiddich above this. Mm. And Glenfiddich is as middle of the road as you get, right? And yet we've yet stated that we be, believe it's the best whiskey oh, at that's its price also, point. Yeah. Oh, it's cheaper than this. Considerably. But I reckon there's just a slightly... And it's hard to compare to a whiskey that isn't in front of me, but I think this... This is all mid. It's lacking a little bit of that that sweet, you know, yeah. uh, high top that makes it. I'm starting to get that super um, drinkable. Astringent kind of bitterness now on the finish. A little bit. Don't get me wrong; it's not a bad whiskey, but it doesn't impress me. It's definitely not not the standout of the, the three examples we've had so far. This is the first disappointment. Hmm. And I mean, maybe, well, but it's not even the first, you know, I mean, we hadn't tried the Glen Kinchy before. So I thought that was fucking marvellous. It was. <laughs> but that was great. And the Dow Winnie, we waxed mm-hmm. lyrical about. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, fuck. That, that was high eights. This... You know, the, I mean, look, disappointing is a strong term. And it's not disappointing me. I suppose the first two built high expectations within me. And I know what's to come. And, <laughs> yeah. I, and again, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be derogatory in any way, shape or form. This just hasn't impressed me. <laughs> and I wanted to be impressed. Yeah. I'm not disappointed, but yeah, I'm not impressed. Mm. I think it's a good example of a spay. I don't know if it's... Actually, it's definitely not worth what the 105 that Dan Murphy's want for it. No, like it's for... I don't think this is a $100 whiskey. I think this is probably a $70 whiskey. Yeah, I was going to say this is a 70 to 80 mm. So yeah, if you find it on special for that... That much, yeah. It's probably worth adding to your collection. Any more than that, yeah. You're probably getting fleeced. You'll find something way better. Like, I can understand why this is predominantly put in blends. That This would add good body to well, a blend, right? This, this, would, this that... would be the backbone of... of so now, I've, I've not tried... Well, blenders used to refer to this as A1 for their blends. And even... Yeah. Man- distillery manager Mike Gunn... Uh, he was the distillery manager at Craigamore from 83 to 98. He has the old A1 stencil plate above his fireplace to commemorate the fact that Craigamore is an A1 uh, rated whiskey for, by blenders. I could, I can understand that because this is, it is meaty yeah. and it, it's got real solid body. You could build around yeah, you this really whiskey. Could. Yeah, you right? really this, could. This is a fucking solid foundation to play with and create... Uh, a super consistent blend mm-hmm. that you can then add what's lacking mm-hmm. to this whiskey. And I think that's, to be honest with you, I know that yeah, that's a good we've point. mentioned before, a really good point. why the fuck did, how was blended whiskey so popular? If this was the style of whiskey that was really predominant, you would want to build on this, right? You'd be mm-hmm. sitting there going, oh, this has got, you know, this is good. I could make this better. Yeah. Right? I mean, these days, and, and look, even back in the day, there would have been that many illicit distilleries and the, there were so many distilleries <laughs> at, at some times. But you couldn't get whiskey from all of them, right? Because they had low uh, capacity for production. Yeah, yeah. So to create a consistent product, you would have latched onto something like this and gone, fuck yeah, if I can get, you know, 50,000 litres of this a year, mm-hmm. I can create something special. Yeah. But this in itself is not special. 
this is the this is a workhorse. This is a uh, mm-hmm. this is a solid a foundation to, to build it. around. Yeah. You know, this is this is a this is a slab upon which you build a pretty pagoda. <laughs> a doig pagoda. Ah, uh, exactly. So what sort of numbers do you pull from it? Oh, uh, I can't be generous. I've given worse whiskies sixes. So this is this is getting sixes. That doesn't. Okay. Do you mean better whiskey sixes? What you said just doesn't fucking hold any water. <laughs> I've given worse whiskeys twos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think I probably meant to say <laughs> I've given better whiskeys sixes. You reckon? Okay. I think we're gonna we're gonna be wildly different on this. I don't think this is gonna push past the seven. I think yeah. this is this is gonna approach a seven, but it's not gonna hit it. Okay. I, I think. Look, I can't give it more than a six nine. Yeah, fair income. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. I can't give it more than an eight. It's a, but it's it is smooth though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's I'm, I'm maybe. That's it's a good example. Maybe of the expectations space, right? are fucking getting the better yeah. of me. I love the oakiness on the finish. It is. Smooth. I love it's how smooth it goes offensive. down. Yeah. Um, as a great example of a space ride, I'm. Uh, I'm going to have to go 8 flat. I'm sort of leaning but somewhere between 7.8 and 8.2. I'll just go 8 flat. Yeah, all right. I, I, can, I can go to 7.3, I think, here, because there's no sting to it whatsoever. Uh, that meatiness is in itself something... That's quite inviting be, on the should, nose. Yeah, yeah. And it, it should be cherished. Yeah, mm-hmm. th- this is... Um, this is... A, 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 it's worth drinking. Like if someone yeah. said, "Hey, would you like a glass of Kragenmore or any blend?" I'd go, "Fuck yeah, give me the Kragenmore." If someone said, "Would you like a Kragenmore or Oh fuck, I'm struggling to think about something I gave fucking shit numbers to. God, I wish I had a memory. <laughs> All right, if someone gave me the option between Glenn Grant and Craig and Moore, I would choose the Craig and Moore, right? Yeah. So, so uh, I can Glenn, go... Glenn Grant Tanner has never impressed me. No. I I could go 7-3 here, I reckon. You might be able to talk me into 7-4, but I, I this is middle of the road as fuck. Yep. 7-2. No, 7-3. I'll give you 7-3. But you're right. It is. Oh, it's it's better cool. than 6-9. That's actually. Um, I think at forty percent, it doesn't need any water. It's just making it worse and worse and worse. That would have been handy information before I put the water in. No, I would have put the water in anyway. What am I talking about? Opens it up a little on the on the nose, but like, there's a bit more sweetness there on the nose with a couple of drops. But slightly it's more taken floral. A, it's a, taken a slightly a shift sharper from, as well. Yeah, it's taken a shift from. All that bottom sort of mids, yeah, and it's, it's mid it's, kind of high. It's closed out the wood on the nose and, and brought out the heather. Yeah, well, that sort of citrus flower mandarin peel kind of thing. Yeah, the blossom, citrus blossom, I reckon. Yeah, I don't. The water wasn't a good idea at all. Oh, it hasn't improved the palate. No, and it's gotten rid of that lovely robe that was on it and that yeah. viscosity. Actually, I will go 7.4 because it had a nice viscosity. Had it a real did. nice yeah, mouthfeel. That's, actually, that's a good point. Had a raise. real nice mouthfeel. So it will get 7.4 off me because I love a viscous dram. Mm. All right. What's the rev say? The rev. Age 12 years. I have a dozen bottles of Cragamore in my personal cellar dating from the early 90s when the distillery was first bottled as a classic malt. Their astonishing dexterity and charm, their naked celebration of all things Speyside, casts a sad shadow over this drinkable but drab and instantly forgettable expression. 
fuck, you know, he's been on point with these so far. The mm. drab is, well, like, yeah, I would look, maybe not instantly forgettable. No. I mean, he's, he's more generous with his numbers, a little less generous with his With his words, words, yeah, his words but, kind of um, lie <laughs> in a way. When... But, you know, I mean, his point remains. Mm. Yeah, I think they're harsh words, like drab, forgettable. It's uh, Mundane is still a harsh word, but it is, is mundanity. It is what it is now. Yeah, fucking oath. It is now. I'm getting a um, tattoo to my forehead. <laughs> Purveyor of mundanity. <laughs> In fact, that's going on my next business card run. Gonna be Mookhurst. <laughs> <laughs> Purveyor of mundanity. Oh, I'm getting some. We should done make LTD this. business yeah. card. <laughs> Superb. Uh, on that note, if you want. Check out the show notes. Go to liveinthedram.com.au. You'll find links to our social media and YouTube. These episodes usually go up first on YouTube in their entirety. We, entirety. We don't edit them at all. No, we don't. And it's the first time I've put this request out. If you're enjoying it at all, leave us a review. Give us a thumbs up and tell a friend that's into whiskey. We'd love to start growing our audience. Yeah, fuck. I mean, if you like it, do the same shit that we do when we hear and yeah. you know, listen to it. Biggest compliment you can give like. any podcast is to tell a friend about it. Oh, man. And if you don't like it, feel free to tell us that too. Yeah. Because the only way we ever learn is by receiving constructive criticism. I tell mean, try us, not tell to us be a what cunt. you don't like. Yeah, don't yeah. be a complete cunt. But you know, feel free. Engage. We're, we're the kind of people that like to engage with others. So engage with us. Actually, one thing I'd like to, I didn't get to say, but sort of a Diageo ticked, ticked a box in regards to uh, sort of a project in the Speyside region where they collaborated with the Space Fishery Board on the construction of a weir on the River Dullin, which is part of the Spey River catchment and is crucial to the Scottish Scotch whisky industry. The project took three and a half years to design and construct, and it replaced a damaged weir. It's hoped that the new weir will improve upstream biodiversity and increase the opportunity for spawning trout and salmon in the river. Nice to go for a bit of a flick down that way. I swear if I ever caught a salmon, I'd probably just take a bite straight out of it. You so, wouldn't Rex hunt it? Give it a kiss and put no, it back? No, I would fucking eat its flesh. Yeah, right. It's, um, yeah. Salmon sashimi is my favourite thing in the entire fucking world. Yeah, I world. quite like a bit of smoked salmon. I don't, I, okay. I don't, I've not, I don't think I've eaten it while it's still breathing or gilling and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gilling, fucking doing its fucking. It's fucking... Oh, I haven't you know, tried to fucking bite on it while it's trying to escape me, yeah. but I enjoy. They're ugly motherfuckers too. I don't know why he directs on it. Oh, yeah, well, that dude was a weird dude, wasn't he? Very much so. Yeah. Very, very much so. Mm. The, the, I think the courts proved that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the number of spawning reds uh, counted above the weir last autumn was the highest that has ever been recorded. Uh, the fish pass allows a range of species to migrate upstream and downstream, including eels, and it represents the gold standard for fish passage in the catchment. It's also hoped that the newly constructed weir will bring environmental benefits to the whole Spey water catchment area, which is home to 11 Diageo single malt distilleries. The company's Mortlach Distillery and Dufftown Distillery currently use water from the River Dullin for their cooling in the distilling process. And a similar smaller scale project has also been completed on the burn of Linkwood at Linkwood Distillery in Elgin in the neighbouring River Lossy catchment. In addition to the work in Speyside, Diageo plans to develop its program of fish pass improvements at its Glen Ord Distillery near Inverness later this year, which might have been later last year. I didn't check the date on the article. Did that just say that there's 11 Diageo distilleries yeah, in yeah. Speyside? Yeah, and now that I read that, yeah, Mortlach in our Duff Town or Dufton. Yeah, right. But maybe they got those after Craggedmore. Entirely possible. It still makes you wonder why they uh, why they chose Craigamore as the jewel in Speyside's crown, so to speak. Yeah. 
I mean, they reckon that they chose fucking Glen Kinchy because it was the pretty one. So maybe, uh, who knows? But, you know, Diageo, yeah. we ragged the shit out of Diageo. <laughs> In fact, you know, listen to point five. Yeah, episode point five of this wee series of the classic monster. Yeah, we didn't. We yeah, sort of flamed them straight out of the gate, didn't we? Yeah, but fuck, there you go, Diageo undoing some of the evil that they're responsible for in the world. Yeah, it's nice to see him giving a bit back. I'll give him a silver star for that. Not quite a gold star, but hey, you never know. Maybe we'll find out more good stuff that they're doing. Yeah, hopefully, keep it up, Diageo. In that respect, fucking hey, change our opinion of you. Well, on that note, my friend. Sláinte, my brother. Sláinte.